we just had a great uh movie come to theaters over the weekend and the headlines read that you know it overperformed we never really hear that um usually the headlines that say you know this movie you know it wow. top you know its gross was bigger than what it uh it was budgeted at but they started to change it up because things just have not been going good with movies entering the theaters we've seen uh fall guy what else uh if it fell. Just, these movies aren't doing very good so you know they're starting to hit the digital platform a little bit earlier they're falling flat in theaters theaters are now starting to reduce ticket prices at certain times of the day they're introducing more combos mm -hmm. trying to bring the customer in things just aren't looking good so you know uh topic number one comes straight from movie hunter 2020 he says movie theaters are slowly are they slowly dying or do we think they're still here to stay mm. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start off with this one. Okay. I will honestly say from a standpoint of a successful movie, you need theaters because streaming doesn't guarantee you the revenue you'll get back from making the film. It doesn't guarantee you the amount of views that you're going to get from getting the view from the thing because we know we just had a we just had a strike on something like this dealing with streaming and everything. Whereas they were using the use of AI and what the streaming percentages were for studios. You, they, it's not much. It's like, what is it like 10 cents on the dollar? But that's per subscription. That does not mean if you're sitting there with a bunch of friends, that's one subscription at that house watching it. So you're only getting the money for that subscription that's being used right then and there. In order for them to make money back, it needs to get into the billions of views on streaming platforms. Whereas with the theaters helps them negate some of that because, hey, look, let's release in theaters. Let's do this. But there's also one dilemma here, too, because I read that article, D-Ray. I also read this article that Marvel is to blame for all these movies bombing at the box office. Because remember, movies like Fall Guy that would do that much at the first thing, we never felt that they were a bomb because Marvel set the bar too high when it when it when there was movies debut and they're like already at 125 million 250 million when they debut that opening weekend so a movie has to make that in people's minds in studios minds that movie has to make that money or otherwise it's deemed a failure the studios are setting themselves up to fail if that's their mentality whereas the mentality before that was hey if we could get like 20 million opening weekend that's a great showing that means we're on par with what else is coming out. Let's see what else is coming up. Okay, so we don't have competition for at least a month. Okay, we can at least stay steady at like between 20 and 15 million for those four weeks and make back our budget within a month or two months. But see, it's because of the Marvel influence, the MCU influence of, oh, you need all your money right away back again that a lot of these movies are deemed failures. Hmm. So... Yeah. I, I think from his business standpoint, theaters are here to stay from the studio aspect of it. I think uh, it's, it's double. I think theaters are dying, meaning that I think that, that we're going to see closures of theaters, but I don't think they're going to die completely. Part of the reason I say that, and I understand what you're saying, Ben, about the Marvel Studios, but I, I think sometimes we do put it in perspective. Like, Certain movies, we don't expect to do Marvel numbers because they're different genre movies. So if you go see a drama movie or, you know, some regular sci-fi, I don't think we expect 400 million. And sometimes 60 million is a good kind of opening weekend for them. Yeah, Marvel has set the bar extremely high. But I think one of the problems is, and the reason why I think it's dying is because the price of the movies, it's not just the ticket anymore. Now it's the refreshments. The theater had uh the experience attached to it i think back in the day and that that was a big allure to why people went to the theaters right it was more than just going to see the movies it was getting the popcorn going with your friends or your family and as technology got good the adobe atmos and everything so i think right now we're we're moved away a bit from the actual experience and now it's focused on holy crap this ticket is this much and then i'm gonna go spend this much money at the theater where I can stay at home. And now with the technology at home, you have 60, 70, 80 inch TVs, high power TVs, you got great surround sound systems. And so a lot of people feel, why go to the theaters and spend all this money when I can just maybe wait a bit, watch it at home, or if you got some type of, uh, you know, 
uh, platform where you can watch movies early, you get that there. So I think because of that, we're going to see the closures of movies, but I don't think we're going to see movies completely going all together. One, because they still bring in revenue. And I think that when we have these high times of movies that are actually good, which we've been missing for a while, and Marvel gave us that, movies are packed. You know, you listen, Oppenheimer, it took me, I don't know how long to see Oppenheimer. Like the theaters everywhere was packed. So I think when you actually have good movies in the theaters, people are going to go. But so I think it's a mixture. So I think I think we're going to see the closure of some. Um, and then Sony just recently bought Alamo, um, which is a I don't know if you guys have that in your state, but you know it's a popular um, theater. So I don't think they're closing for good, but I do think that we're going to see a, a, a decrease in the number of open theaters. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you know a lot of things both of you guys said. Um, and that was going to be my biggest sticking point was what Jagoda was saying. I mean, you know, the experience at home now is just as good as the theater. So it's almost negating the point, you know, unless you just want to do an outing now on the weekend or something to decide to, I'm um, okay, I want to go see this movie in the theater. You know, now it's not like, you know, quite the almost every other weekend thing for most people to where they used to go because it was cheaper. It was a little more affordable to go. And now it's just becoming a, a quick little experience. Oh, let's just go see this one at the theater. I really want to see this one. You're not going as often anymore because the ticket prices, concession prices are up. And, you know, that's it's across the board. It's not just theaters doing it. Um, we're, we're seeing it with fast food. We've seen it in headlines, you know, Target. And I think a, a couple of stores, they're trying to lower their prices because, you know, the customers aren't there spending that same dollar that they used to spend before. So they're trying to find other ways, you know, to bring the customer back in. So with theaters now, um, I've seen with Regal, because that's who I mostly got here in my area, you know, on the weekend, the first showing on Saturdays and Sundays now are six bucks. So they're trying to pull that customer back in. They got different little combo deals at the concession stand that you can pick up. So they're trying other little small things to help bring it in because um, I don't typically go to the movies during prime time and definitely not on the weekend. So I don't see the full theaters that some of you guys are seeing. Plus, there's so many here in the area, including Raleigh. Um, so I don't see them packed. The last time I seen a packed theater that I went was Scream, and that's only because I went on a Saturday evening. Um, so typically when I go, the theaters aren't, aren't packed at all. Even when I look at tickets to see like, okay, is this movie selling out? Sometimes I'll just go on my app and look, and it's not. It's not even close to it. So maybe it's just my area because I'm not in a big city area. I will have to travel a little bit further to get to those more um, dense populated uh, theaters that people might be going to. But in my area, I do not see most movies selling out at all. Most of them aren't full, even on some Friday nights. Um, they're just not full like that. So like Jagoda said, I think that's what we'll be seeing is a few more that you know that we're used to seeing they're they're probably going to be closing up because they're just not getting that same foot traffic same do amount we, of dollar coming in but i don't think they're just going to totally die out do we see um theaters start doing the amc pass plan now in like regal cinemark do we start yeah, seeing dope. something like that to try and get more people in that's a great like, packet because oh, i got it yeah it's great yeah, regal it, definitely has one because I know Nate from um, Geeks and Flicks has something similar to that with, with the AMC Pass. So he's he's there at the theaters almost every weekend because, hey, I'm getting free movies <laughs> because of the awards pro rewards program. I think if theaters went that route, like offered a pass, hey, you go see, let's say you go see four movies a month, which is believable. Because especially over the summer, there's kids' movies coming out all the time. There's big, usually huge summer blockbusters. So going to see four movies a, a month or four movies in a two-month time, and you, hey, after the fourth or fifth one, you get something free, I think that will also get people in there. My theater, my local theater, has always done matinees at five bucks, and Tuesdays are five bucks. So it's mm -hmm. like... So it, it, it's nothing new for me to do that. My Cinemark, on the other hand, just lowered their prices <laughs> to where their matinee prices are now five twenty five. Mm. So it's not necessarily just an even five bucks. It's five twenty five. I'm going. 
Mm. Because I never, I hardly step foot in my Cinemark because the ticket prices are too damn expensive for me and my wife to go. Whereas a smaller theater here, we could go see a matinee showing for ten bucks. Go in and get our pop and pop. Uh, if we want popcorn, a large popcorn is like five bucks for us, and then the drinks like four bucks. So you're talking almost twenty bucks there for a date for the two of us. This, this man, which is down the good. Doing everything. Yeah, which is a good thing. If you think about it that way, and they have a small rewards plan that, okay, you use your card, you get points. You know, I've gotten so many, I have so many free movies sitting there, but I go usually when I can't use the passes or coupons <laughs> for them. So they just sit there and accumulate. So there's one, well, day, there's one time me and my wife are going to go to movies. We're going to get free drinks, free food, and a free movie <laughs> because of all the reward points. My, uh, my take on it is, um, Firstly, let me just say, you got Dakota. You, you that boy, good. You, you you act like you know about with the ticket prices you just said. Like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, look at that solo shot. I look good, don't I? But um, first of all, he acts like he knows. Dakota buys one click today, but he but he's relatable though. He sounds like he know what he's talking about right there. But um, far as um, <laughs> far as uh, the question, I truly believe. We're in a time of, first of all, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. Fall Guy, if, like, those titles sound like they're set up to failure. Who's asking for Garfield? Like, if sounds like it's going to just fail in the Fall Guy, like, I mean, it's going to fall. Like, like these titles, if you guys really look at what's been releasing, that has to factor into the momentum of the box office. Like, Fury Rosa, I mean, it did bad. I don't see why it did that bad, but at the same time, it's like, People love Mad Max all of a sudden, but I've never heard that movie really, you know, like, so I think the expectations have, they've been a little bit high on these certain these movies. I think it's just, we're ready to get back to the way things were. And frankly, that is not going to happen. And if it does happen, it's going to be quite some time. I mean, COVID really was a big hit. People fail to realize how much that hurt and whether people are still scared to go out or not, is not even a factor anymore. It's the fact that people are used to the habits they picked up during COVID. You know, streaming always did hurt it, and streaming continues to hurt it because at the end of the day, it's like we always talk about with physical media. I'll just wait for a sale. It's the same thing. They just wait for it to come to streaming. I mean, look at Fall Guy. It was right on streaming. How many, what, two weeks or what? How many days? I don't remember, but it was very short time period. So, do you, you know, I think we're wait, seeing uh, um, oh. re we're, my bad. I, I think we're seeing like a, a, a restructure. So I don't think theaters are going to go away. It's an institution that they want to keep because, you know, like the Oscars and all that, they want to keep theaters in play. It's a tradition. That's something we, we don't want to really see go away. But at the same time, you're witnessing restructure. So it's going to change. And um, I think you're going to start to see a lot of them go out, but you'll start seeing local towns pick them, pick up theaters and they'll have to, you know, play like distribution type thing and they'll have to get the films there to show them. But it's just a restructuring uh, period, and I believe the AMC pass is going to be the route because I'm sorry, movie theaters, you're going to have to you're going to have to suffer what movies and music did. You're going to have to suffer like they suffered bootlegging, basically. You know, glorified bootlegging, which is the streaming services, people staying at home, people paying ten dollars and getting all the music they want, people paying fifteen dollars getting all the movies they want. Well, guess what? People are going to have to pay twenty dollars to get all the movies they want. It's just where we're at. They created the monster, and that's where we're at. Just restructure. But I think similar to what D-Ray was saying, and I think as a, as a point is we're seeing this across a number of things. So like if you take your cell phone provider, right, they're packaging things with cell phone providers and cable providers in order to stay afloat. So if you got T-Mobile, you may can get Hulu for free or you may can get Netflix for free. Mm -hmm. So streaming is struggling too. So what they're trying to do mm -hmm. in order to like you'll have the backdoor deals where let's say um, a platform like a, a, a streaming platform will have a contract with one of these cell phone providers that, okay, we have this, let's get more subscribers on a T-Mobile line so we can do this. AMC Pass is great. I have it. You can see 12 movies a month. That they're not going to be able to survive on because if you actually see how much money they're losing mm -hmm. by, by mm -hmm. ticket prices, they're not remaking it, I don't think. I don't have the stats, but I don't think they're remaking it on the concession stand. So unless they're operating at a profit before and they can sustain that, even if you do get people, because people nowadays either bring their own stuff into the movie theaters or maybe mm -hmm. get one thing, you know what I mean? So it's a great idea, 
But to mm-hmm. have it by itself, I don't know how long they're going to be able to sustain that because of the amount of money that they would technically be losing. Ticket prices. And Six Flags did the same thing. I used to be at, um, a platinum pass holder at Six Flags. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You pay this one price, you go for an entire season. Their idea is I'll make it up in concessions, games, and all this stuff. Now, music parks are different because you, you most likely can, especially with the food and all the other stuff. But as you see, Six Flags is struggling as well. So I'm not sure AMC is going to be able to survive unless we start seeing these packaging where, hey, you know, you join this cell phone provider, this cable provider, and we'll give you, you know, these tickets, which they do now, you know. So it, it, you know, it's you, all across the, the package, Do we think? The, mm-hmm. Go, Cal. Okay, the package part he's talking about, I mean, I know that's, that's centered, and a lot of people notice that, but it's always been around back to the cable days when we always got it's a package you know it's always been a package deal for something so i i don't really think i think that's something that we're zeroing in on but it's it's always been here i think all these companies are going to take a hit like everything has to restructure at some point because what's going to really trickle down to is the movies the movies are just going to get smaller budgets because everybody they're going to see over time that this is not sustainable to make these type of movies, you know, and they're not even doing well in the box office. So you're going to see a trickle effect from every area in Hollywood. You really are. So here's here's the other thing, too, on this topic. Mm-hmm. Do you guys think that streaming that the movie shouldn't stream? What's the window from the time it's released in theaters, in your opinion, to the time it's st- streaming on a streaming service? Five months. Because I honestly think ha- having it two weeks later from the release date in theaters it hurts the movie in the it theaters. Does, oh, no, that means it does, in trouble. at the same time, basically, it does. And I understand, like, it, yes, it should wait a bit so that it forces or maybe will force people to go to the theaters. But you understand, we're in a society that has a very quick, like, uh, uh, the hype of something. If you wait that long, now it kills streaming. Because now the hype about that movie, if I wait five months, I may not be that hyped to get that movie. Even a month? As I used to be. Even a, a month? month? No, no, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with waiting. I, but I, I think disagree. that the window, you got to be very cautious of the window, right? So, and we had a longer window before. But I feel like mm-hmm. right now, the hype of things goes very quickly. And plus, you got product that consistently comes out and comes out. Five yeah. months from now, man, we had like maybe like, what, 12 to 20 movies? Like, yeah, but it's, that's because we're going through a, a restructuring period. The world went through a crisis. Like, Hollywood is still feeling that, so things are slower. Like, there's a lot of shows that are still catching up. Like, and a lot of there's so much in streaming. Sorry, there's so much in streaming. From being pushed back. I agree with you, Cal. The, a yeah, lot of these sure. movies that are coming out are the ones that have been pushed back because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And the story. Yeah, but, and it, yeah but, but my thing is we'll still get product. Like the, the physical media space, the, it, it's a turnaround. Like you have to sell product consistently. And I buzz think five, doesn't five last months is long. perfect. I do. Because it, yeah, it'll I'm increase really the happy. one. We've been, we've been there. I know we're in the ADH era now, but people, people conform and adapt to things like that. They really do. It will become the norm after a while because we've, it was like that before. You know, just like them taking our movies away. You do know Hollywood didn't want to release movies into the home at one time. And they got used to it. They adapt. Now that feels normal. Like when, when they take when they do these things, it eventually becomes a normal thing. And there is so much content that we're missing. It falls in between the cracks. Content is constantly coming out on these streaming networks. And I think we will be well we will have more than enough in between that time period. And I think that will actually build anticipation to either if you don't want to wait five months, get your ass to the movie theater. So that I think it might work out only movies that should be coming out very soon is independent movies where they already made their budget back it doesn't even matter if they come out a month later you know but all the big stuff shouldn't come out that fast in my opinion yeah and that goes like like Kyle said earlier you know some of these movies are kind of like an anomaly like fall guy they're to me they're purposely putting certain people into these movies they know if you think about it, Fall Guy, that was even a little bit before my time. I remember being, I think I was like six, year old, six mm-hmm. years old when that show was a hit because I, I remember getting in trouble because of the intro had a curse word in it. And I said it to my brother because he loved the show. So that movie is definitely aimed at a older demographic, but they trying to put someone to star in it that, you know, a lot of people like. So they had to already know, OK, this movie may not do as good as we intend for it to because you know, 
it's only aimed towards a certain demographic other than putting this star in it. And then it's continuously happening with the other movies that we see. They're trying to stockpile it with, you know, big name actors and actresses because they know this, this story or these characters, they're not really going to move the number. So if we can put some faces in there that everybody loves and accustomed to, maybe then they'll come and see it. It's like the whole Garfield thing. Yes, it's kind of catered to kids, but you also still have to bring in that the family member, the adult of the house has to be willing to also go see the movie and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. They made a lot of mistakes with streaming. They did. 